Greetings, and welcome to episode 22. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the shadow, and how it is a part of you, and why it is a part of you. Also, this video is getting made kind of late, because I, I had a little bit of trouble today. We'll get into that some other time. Anyway, let's get started. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the shadow. First of all, what is the shadow? That's what I'm calling the more, what people would consider the, the more negative aspects of the, of the psyche or the soul or the spirit or whatever. And you can say, well, I don't have a shadow. I'm just this brilliant bright light. Well, the brighter the light, the longer the shadow. That's just a fact. <laughs> and the more defined the shadow is. So you cannot sit there and say that you're just all light. You maybe don't focus on your shadow, but you have your little outbursts. I am not perfect. Actually, yeah, we're all perfect. That's not the point. Perfection is not what we're after. And as long as you keep denying you have a shadow or denying that there is a shadow, you are denying half of yourself. Half of yourself. You cut yourself off from your power when you cut yourself off from your shadow. Oh, but it's negative. It's not inherently negative. We just, we neglect it to the point where it becomes a negative. But if you neglected your positive side, that would also be a negative, would it not? Think about it. Every fun thing you've done that required bending or breaking the rules, that wasn't your light at work. <laughs> but no uh, intense negativity ensued. It's not just about negativity. Just like being positive isn't all about uh, goodness and light and happy. I've been in a very positive space and gotten angry. And the energy from that was still anger. But it was like, just, just because I'm using positive energy doesn't make anger a positive thing. Just because I'm using positive energy doesn't m make certain actions good. So, when you say, well, I'm only in my positive self, that's fine. But just because you perform negative acts in your positive state does not make them positive at all. I fully accept I have a shadow. All that you do that is unseen. Well, I have my chakras and my this and my that. What was there 73 chakras? 73 primary chakras. Can you see them? So you're dealing with stuff you cannot see. That's a shadow, is it not? That's a, that's a dark, it's in a dark place. It's inside of you. I can visualize, visualization is not seeing it with the naked eye, eyes open, out here. This all takes place in the dark, <laughs> inside. <laughs> People need to learn that the light, that, that, that the dark is no more a scary place than the light at all. What you do with it can be scary. Well, I don't like that side of myself. I scare myself. You shouldn't scare yourself. You shouldn't be afraid of, of, of anyone on the planet. You shouldn't be afraid of yourself. I know what I'm capable of. Well, if you're capable of, capable of that depth of negativity, then equally you are that capable of that those heights of goodness. This speaks to duality. And because one, in one of my videos I say to put away duality. That's part of the reason. You, you can never 
put away duality if you're terrified of your shadow, if you're terrified of that. Oh, there's some negativity. To the, oh, what about Jesus and God? You know, being a good and righteous person has nothing to do with morality. Nothing at all. Being a righteous person means that you are enlightened. Being a morally right person doesn't make you a good person. An evil person can be a morally right person simply by not doing anything that displeases anyone. If you've noticed in, in life, watch the news. Watch in your circle of friends. The people that have something to say that could change the world will probably piss you off by saying it. That's unpleasant. Does that make it a bad thing? Does that make it morally wrong? No. So get off the moral right, moral wrong. You need to get in touch with your shadow get to know your shadow because you'll never know yourself until you know your shadow I can get in touch with your shadow oh yeah you know how <laughs> get you a brand new computer with a 56k dial-up modem <laughs> an Internet Explorer browser and we'll see the real you in five or ten minutes <laughs> Because your shadow will spill out all over the place. <laughs> you need to know this part of yourself. Because you don't do it. Well, you got to do away with it. No, no. You incorporate it into your being. Do away with duality and polarity. That's just, it's that simple. You cannot have two halves in one person. You cannot. And I don't care which part of the polarity, what part of the whole being you focus on. If you want to focus on the negativity, no, negativity. If you want to focus on the negativity, do that. If that's who you are. If you want to focus on the positivity, do that. If that's who you are. But you need to be one whole person. Light and dark. Positive and negative. Matter of fact, don't even decide. You just are. Like I said in, in another video, it's like Schrodinger's universe. The situation is. The observer decides if the situation is good or bad. You decide if that situation calls for your negativity or your positive, positive influence. You decide that. The observer. Because not everybody in the room is going to see the situation the same way you do. You say, it's time for anger. The other person across the room says it's time for understanding. The other person said it's time for patience. Do you understand? Because we're all viewing the same situation through a different perspective. And let's say you're the one that's right. Say you're the one that it calls for anger and maybe a violent response. Because something's going down and somebody needs defending. What if the patience and understanding people are going to get this person killed with all their patience and understanding? Is it still time for patience and understanding? Or is it God's will that this person die and that was his path? Or maybe it was God's will that I be in the room angry and ready to whip somebody's ass and save that dude's life. And we can have patience and understanding in a minute when I'm finished. You need to know your shadow. Just like if you are Satanist watching this, if you think you're the evilest thing to crawl across the earth watching this, you need to learn your light. It's there. And if you tell me, well, I'm just so evil, well, that means your light is just bright as fuck. And you need to, you need to become one whole being. That's where your power is. That's where your power comes from. Being a whole being. Mm, excuse me. <laughs> Some people think they're evil, but they're really not. Some people think they're good, and they're really not. Some, th some people think they're morally right, and it's just a front. If how you act when you're on the street ain't how you act when you're at home, it's a front. Straight up. If you're a bitch out in the world, and but nice to everybody at home, yeah, that's a front. And you're not really a bad person. If you're nice to everybody out in the world, but you are an asshole or a bitch at home, yeah, that's a front. You're not really a nice person. Morally right is based on 
perception is what it seems like because people only seem to follow the rules and I don't mean the laws I mean those moral guidelines set down in religions people it seems that people only follow that stuff when somebody's watching when somebody can pass judgment then it's okay to do that stuff but when nobody's looking I'm gonna hit this joint or I'm gonna smoke a cigarette or I'm gonna have a shot of tequila or I'm gonna have sex with a stranger when nobody's looking You draw it into one whole being, the light and the negativity, put away your moral right or your moral wrong. This has nothing to do with that. Good and evil isn't even about morally right and morally wrong. That's a, two, that's a whole different topic, a whole different conversation than your light and your shadow. We're talking about you as an individual. The shadow leads to, to the dark path. What's wrong with that? The shadow leads to evil, and that's bullshit. The light can lead to just as much evil as the darkness. Now, the teachers on the shadowy path, you might find a little unsavory, and the learning curve is a little steeper. Because the universe knows that negativity is the greatest teacher there is. Think about it. When everything is goodness and cushy, you don't learn shit, and you become lazy and complacent. But as soon as the shit hits the fan, we spring into life as, 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 as human beings. We spring into life and who we really are shines through. When shit happens, when everything's cushy, like I said, you, come, you become complacent and lazy. Negative situations are our greatest teacher and they always have been. Trials and tribulations. And Every time you, 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 you try to deny that, you do yourself and everyone around you a disservice. I'm not going to lie. I, I lean more towards things that feel good, things I like to see. But I can no more condemn a man for something I've done or something I've forgiven a friend or relative for than I could go out and do it myself if it's something I don't agree with. He just punched a child. I just forgive him. I'm going to stop him, but I can't condemn him. Do you understand? I've forgiven people that have done some dastardly things, and if I saw someone doing it, I might stop them, but I'm not going to condemn them. Because I have a shadow, and I may not have done that, but I've done some foolishness. We've all done some foolishness. Well, I'd just rather not. Why would you rather not? It doesn't make me feel good. Why does it not make you feel good? Because everybody's watching and judging. And then as soon as you turn your back and not watching, that person that was just judging you is over in the corner doing it themselves. It's a fact. Now, this doesn't give you free license to run amok. Be true to yourself. If you feel you, if you honestly feel you should do or should not do a certain thing, don't do it. If you feel in your heart that you should disregard what I'm saying, disregard it. But what I'm telling you is, get to know your shadow so you can draw the two, your good and your bad, together and become one whole person. Nothing hiding in the shadows. What you see is what you get. People hide in the light. Think about that. The one th there's a few things I've learned in the 40 years I've been on this planet. People learned to talk so they could lie. People learned how to hide in plain sight so they could tell you one thing and be something else behind closed doors. That's called acting. Why don't we use telepathy as a species? Because people... Well, people are basically honest. No, people... Most people... Yeah. Maybe. I'll give you that. Most people are honest. But the majority of us don't want to communicate via telepathy or emotional connection, empathy, 
we don't want to communicate this way for one reason just in case we have to lie about something and then there's the side reasons because I don't want you to see all my embarrassments because I don't want you to know the things I do when you're not looking it's a whole, this whole system we have is designed specifically for covering our asses but then you think about it if everybody's out sinning there really ain't nothing to hide in the first place is there so just stop sinning that's that simple if you're that embarrassed of doing it don't do it well there is no God there's a whole lengthy discussion about God that I'm gonna leave for another day oh there is God some people run amok because they feel like there's nobody looking over their shoulders so I can do whatever I want and then there's the people that don't do anything because they feel like someone's looking over the show the people that are doing whatever they want are a damn sight more honest than the people that want to do the same damn things but aren't because they feel like there's someone looking over their shoulder that's moral right and wrong that does that's no great teller of if you're a good person because if you want to do the things but you're not doing them just because you're afraid you might get in trouble that doesn't mm, I, I wouldn't assume you're a good person this guy's gonna go stab ten people he may not kill him he might kill him he doesn't care he just has a hankering to stab people let's say you think that's a good idea yeah that's a good idea I'm gonna stab people but he's running around with the, with the idea that there's nobody watching and he's never gonna get caught what stops you is I don't want to get caught but you still want to go stab people and yes that's a little extreme you probably don't want to go stab people but you're getting the idea just because you don't run around stabbing people does not make you a better person it just means that you just did not afford yourself the opportunity to go out and stab people that's just a fact and the guy running around stabbing people yeah he's an asshole but he's a little more honest for his undertaking I feel like stabbing <laughs> done <laughs> and then the good person isn't the one that wants to go stabbing and doesn't the good person is the one that oh you want to go stabbing people huh that would have never crossed my mind and you can't even really say that's a good person because if the thought would have never crossed his mind if it would have never occurred to him to go stabbing people can you say that's good or bad I can't fathom it I can fathom pretty much anything but what I can't fathom is doing something against who you are so you're saying we should go stabbing people no <laughs> for no other reason that you don't get in trouble and you don't go to prison not because I think it'll keep you out of the kingdom of heaven see the difference Huh. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Now, I'm going to tell you it's best if you would like to go killing people that it be un that, that, that that kind of endeavor be undertaken under certain conditions. Killing for no reason is frowned upon. Vengeance isn't frowned upon. Eating isn't frowned upon. What else isn't frowned upon? Justice isn't frowned upon. Cold blooded murder is frowned upon. So you go kill a deer, but you're going to eat it. It's murder. It's still murder. Meat is murder. <laughs> tasty, tasty murder. But murder nonetheless. You're still killing something. But then pulling up them carrots and chopping them up, that's murder too. Believe it or don't death is death and if you're the one bringing it it's murder so you have revenge eye for an eye you have hunting to feed you and your family your friends whatever and then you have justice do we believe justice will be served in taking this man or woman's life In other words, it has to mean something. 
If you kill for no reason, then people get up. That's how the way it used to be. If you kill for no reason, people get upset. I don't know. If I were the universe, I'd just say killing's killing. And you make up your own little devices of whether it's right or wrong so you can live with it. Notice I didn't say the universe says killing is bad. The universe says killing is killing. You come up with your own little devices to justify so you can sleep at night. Which is weird, considering you kill a man, you can send a man to Disney World and, and feel bad about it. Could you imagine? This is what, what killing someone is like, because everyone goes to heaven no matter what. Unless you die in a completely negative place. If you've lived your whole life in a negative place and you die in that same negative place, you're going to a negative place. But those of us that are breaking even, we're probably going to heaven. Just because that's just the way certain mechanisms work. And you're only going to heaven if you know how to get there. Because they say, go into the light. I, I, that light, yeah. I think that light is your mom at the hospital, your next mom at the hospital. So don't just go immediately into the light. Go out and explore first and then go into the light. But there's things, yeah, and the only thing out there in your immediate vicinity that's going to get you is your shadow that you've spent your whole life neglecting. Think about that for a minute. If you'd have never separated yourself from your shadow, nothing would be chasing you and you wouldn't have anything to be afraid of because you have your shadow to protect you. That's what it's there for. Notice how your shadow will break you away from yourself and say, yeah, we're going to go drinking tonight. You're usually a wallflower. We're going to the bar. That's what it's there for. And then when you get enough drink in you, your shadow will say, I know you're scrawny, but hit that dude. <laughs> and then hilarity ensues. Not the point. The point is that's what your shadow is there for. Your shadow is there for the experiences of it. For the experience of it. Your shadow is how you evolve. Like I said, when the shit hits the fan, we shine. As a species, when the shit hits the fan, you see who's who and what's what. And that's a fact. So, your shadow is not the bad guy. Christianity taught you your shadow was the bad guy. The only religion that taught you your shadow was the bad guy, Christianity. Like I said, they teach it wrong. Not everything in that book is wrong. Granted, it's only a piece of the whole bigger picture that you can find in its totality in other religions. But it would be a better jumping off point if they didn't steer everyone away from their own personal power. But well, you got to give your power to God. No, God has his own power. You are one of his batteries. As long as you exist, you are, you are a battery for God. As long as you exist. You could be doing devil's work. You could be doing bright, bright God's work. You could be doing angel's work, demon's work. And we're speaking in the classical Christian sense, not in the enlightened sense of the term of angels and demons. Because the enlightened sense of devils, angels, and demons, when I conquer your people, your religion is now the religion of the devil. And your angels are now demons. Your God is now the devil. So in the enlightened term of it, there is no demons. There is no devil. Unless my army defeats your army. Now in the Christian version of it, we speak to polarity and shadow and light, good and evil, demons and God, angels and the devil. So, when you look at it that way, and you don't separate it, and you know that the universe just sees, it, it's experiencing, and you have the shadow that helps you evolve, the darkness helps you evolve, and then you spend your whole life not giving it any credit at all 
and then wonder why the first thing to come after you is your shadow when you die. You're thinking, oh my god, it's gonna kill me! It's thinking, hey, I haven't seen anyone forever! But because it's, <laughs> it looks like an horrible monster to you, you're like, ah! But the, it's, it's, hey, how you doing? I'm right here! It's you, it's the purest form of you. But we all want what feels good. What feels good. What feels right. It ain't all about feels good. And let me, you lose nothing, nothing, if you draw this into one thing. A thing. Not positive, not negative, a thing. But one thing. Not two things. Not positive, not negative. One thing. And then as a situation arrives, you decide per situation whether something is a positive or a negative. Which part of you do you need out? Do you need your your essence out front to defend you? Or do you need to look good? That's how the light really does. It makes you look good. It makes you feel good. <laughs> You'll notice that if you're just a being, if you're just one person, you have a lot more control over your shadow's shenanigans because your shadow is you. If you're not exerting any control over this force because you're trying to pretend it doesn't exist, yeah, it's going to run amok. Think about it. If you had a child and spent its whole life pretending it didn't exist, how would that child turn out? I have a shadow. My shadow has been there through the thick and through the thin and is one of my best friends. And I don't acknowledge it all the time because I like to think that it's a part of me. And if it is still at this point separate from me, then, hey, how you doing? Ain't seen you in a while. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> not afraid of my shadow my shadow's gotten me through some of the worst shit I've ever been through and is the reason I've had some of the most fun I've ever had <laughs> straight up because <laughs> let's face it I wasn't running around as a teenager doing the Lord's work oh no you if you were a Christian you would have swore I was running around doing the devil's work and for a time there I was doing the devil's work until I figured out he don't exist if the dude with the beard don't exist then the dude with the horns don't exist not in that way and that's not to say there's no negativity and there's no positive energy that's just to say that they're not standing there staring over my shoulder. It's a battle for good and evil. No. It's the reaction that positive and negative forces create. It looks like a war, but it's just like an energetic reaction. That's all it is. One place. In here. Why do you think all points in time and space exist simultaneously? Because there's only one split. There's only one place. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I'm not ready to experience one yet. There's a whole lot of things I have to remember to get back to that point. But I can take the baby steps and start here. And make one person. Being spiritual, looking for God, being a member of the universe. It's not a team sport. You don't need a cheering section. It's not about what it looks like. Because to somebody else, my path might look crazy and chaotic. But to me, it's the spice of life. Learning, teaching, existing. And people say, but you just sit there. It's all you do. You never go out anywhere. Yes, but the... The adventure is on the inside. The meditating, the way the energies ebb and flow. If you could experience life for one day how I experience life, you wouldn't need to go to the bar ever again. You'd save a ton of money on liquor, a ton of money on weed. Now don't get me wrong, I like to I like to have a drink every once in a while. But I don't need it. Not as a form of unwinding. 
I don't need it to f have positive energy. I have positive energy, and when I drink, I like to give that away. I'm a happy drunk. Oh, I wonder what would happen if I let my shadow run amok while I was drunk. Probably end up in jail. <laughs> huh. I just wanted to be known. I'm not a Satanist. I don't worship dark forces. But I'm not afraid of them either. I don't stand in the light. I walk the middle path. I try to be a whole and complete being at all times. There's nothing your shadow has ever done to you. But you disown your shadow every chance you get. Just pay attention next time something bad happens. All that negativity. And poof. You'll spring into life. And you'll think of a way through it. And you'll clean up the mess. And you'll fuck off your shadow. And jump into the light. The cushy feeling of having completed your journey. You know, that particular portion of your journey. Oh, it's over now. I can rest. And all praise to the light and the God. But it was your shadow that got you through it. You. But there were several people that rushed to your aid. Did they rush to your aid just to make themselves look good? That's called, what's that called? Unenlightened self-interest. Doing good deeds just to look good? Or did you feel it in your heart you were supposed to be there to help? How much did you help? Did you loan any money? Oh. Do you expect it to be paid back? Oh. <laughs> That's called unenlightened self-interest. That's when you... You're, you're banking on the, the team aspect of doing good deeds. There is no team. Enlightenment, the universe... I, I want to say it doesn't pick favorites, but I have a feeling that it probably does. I have favorites. Why wouldn't the universe? You're just mad because you're not one of the favorites. I'm probably not one of the favorites either. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that does kind of suck. But hey, you know, such is life. No extremes. Don't go too far one way. Don't go too far the other way. Stay as close to the center, as close to the middle path as, as is humanly possible in the broken system we live in. It's just that simple. Don't shy away from your shadow. Don't shy away from the darkness. Don't run headlong into the light. Because you'll start to see as you get further along down the path that things aren't what they seem. You couldn't have sleight of hand if there wasn't light showing. No trick of the light if there's only darkness. Matter of fact, in the beginning, there was only darkness. Okay. Do you see where I'm coming from? Do you see what I mean? And don't just take my word for it. Look back through your own life. Look back through any part of your life that was laden, heavily laden with hardship. Did you crumple to the ground, praying to God to save you from it? 
or did you shine and get up and get through it and then evolved through the process that was your shadow at work that time you had the courage to stand up and speak for yourself that was your shadow at work it's black he's into black magic you know black magic was not a description of the type of magic that you were weaving there is only magic when they called it black magic it was because they learned it from black people read a book you know books those analog websites you find at the, at the library you know the analog internet <laughs> anyway we're getting on to the 30 minute mark I hope you enjoyed this or learned something because I enjoyed speaking <clears throat> excuse me uh, if you did learn anything or enjoy this please click the like button or you could favorite the video if, if you like and if you would like to come back or keep coming back and keep getting more information like this or maybe you just like the sound of my voice well hit the subscribe button but until next time you hang in there <laughs> <laughs>